Hi, and welcome back to the Heathkit H8 computer project that I've got going. Um, you might remember, if you watched my last episode, this is some equipment that I picked up at the VCF West event down in Mountain View, California. I picked up this and a H9 terminal along with H17 disk drives. Before I get started too far here, I do want to apologize for how much voiceover I'm using today in the video but there are a lot of reasons for that and I think that this will just make a little more sense if I do it this way. So the first thing I did with the system is to just kind of generally inspect it. Uh, the front panel I noticed looked either dirty or chipped and uh, until cleaning this up I'm not really sure how that's going to look. Um, and the system is a lot dirtier than it might appear in the video. There's kind of a lot of um, dust and even moisture residue on the system. So we'll want to get that cleaned up. I also noticed that the power cord has got some areas where it looks like it's melted. And I don't think this is from the wire getting hot. It just looks like maybe a soldering iron or something um, got up against it. I also noticed that the keys, a lot of them are kind of shedding the plastic coating uh, on the top of the stickers that go on the keys. So I'm probably going to need to find something else to do with this. Um, maybe some replacement stickers or I can laser print something uh, but I'll look into taking care of that as well and then we're missing the little orange tag that says H8 uh, computer on it. The next order of business is to open up the system and to start to pull the cards out. Uh, I'm going to be doing a slow power up of the power supply in this with the cards taken out and uh, I want to be very careful as I do that process because I don't want to damage the large capacitor in this system or any parts of the power supply. So um, its first power up will be with all the boards removed. Um, one note of concern as well is that the uh, memory card in this, the WH864, when I first picked this up was uh, plugged one pin off. Now I have not powered this up yet um, so I'm, you know, not too worried about me damaging it, but I'm concerned that this may have been previously powered up with the system in that configuration, and if it was, I'm not really sure what damage could have been done, but from reading the boards, I know that's a fairly common thing that happens, and usually when it does, it damages something. So, uh, also, once I get all the cards out and do my power-up and uh, the power supply uh, with a Variac, I'm going to kind of go through the manual and go through the testing process for each stage of the build and I think that will to some degree help keep me out of trouble. So um, let's go ahead and get all of the rest of the cards out of the system. This H8 is configured with just four cards. It has of course the the CPU card, well five cards if you include the panel. Um, it has a 64k memory card and the disk controller card and it also has a uh, four-port multi-port adapter that I believe was set up to work with the terminal um, with the H9. So I'm just kind of going to do a visual inspection of the cards, look for anything obvious, um, missing parts, um, any of the cards that have tantalum capacitors, just double checking to see if any of those uh, might be damaged. That's a common fault on a lot of old uh, computer PCBs and then you can see the next card out here is for the disk control. Uh, so this is for the H17 dual disk drive that comes with it. Um, again, just a quick visual inspection. Um, not that I'm going to visually detect any real faults on these cards. And then of course the card I'm most worried about here is the 64K memory card. You know, visually again looks fine, but this card was plugged in incorrectly. So I'm, I'm a little concerned, and this is certainly one of the cards I, I hope to be working and in good shape. And then we're going to have to get the CPU card out. And I know this one is kind of uh, tangled up a little bit with the front panel. There's some uh, connectors that are between the two boards. So I'm going to get that disconnected. And this is the 8080 CPU card. And this one does have some tantalum caps on it, so I want to take a close look at those. And uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and pull the panel off and you can kind of notice how dirty the panel is and it looks like it's scratched up or that the paint's nicked up but uh, I'm not so sure about that on closer inspection and I'm thinking that this front panel might clean up fairly nice um, at least I'm hoping so and I'm really happy to see that the red lens uh, for the front panel is in good condition um, that's one of those things I think would be a really hard item to find and replace all right, get the front panel off there. And now we'll work on getting uh, the front panel PCB out. One of the things that's kind of interesting too um, about this Heathkit computer is the fact that they used all slot head screws. And I guess that might just be a period thing for you know the mid to late 70s I'm so used to seeing the Phillips head screws and they're a lot easier to work with um, to get out honestly and uh, some of the screws have been missing on this and I'm probably going to uh, replace them with Phillips head screws I may just replace them all with Phillips head screws uh, I know that's not authentic but uh, these slot head screws are just a real pain uh, to get out when disassembling the system all right, next is uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a look at the power supply componentry. Um, there's a very large capacitor in here. I think it's something like 77,000 microfarads. Um, and that's what I'm most worried about. That and the transformer um, would be very hard to replace, and I don't want to really damage those. Um, I'd like to keep those original, even though I know we can put modern power supplies in these. I just want to keep things as they are. So going to take just a quick visual look and one problem right away is this has a blown fuse and the blown fuse does not surprise me terribly much um, given what I found earlier um, with the card uh, the memory card um, but more concerning is as I pull the back plane card out to take a look at it um, I do notice that there is a burned area on the PCB and it looks like it, uh, it may have burned more than once. And it looks like there's been an attempt to clean it up and to rework this area. But I think that's probably the point of concern um, of the damage that might have been caused by the card being plugged in incorrectly. And taking a closer examination um, there of the rectifier diodes I can see two of them look pretty swollen and dark. And so I'm pretty certain that those are going to be bad and that's going to be my first part replacement on this system. I did share um, with one of the Google groups, the Society of 8-Bit Heathkit Computerists, that um, I had found this issue and that the rectifier diodes were burned out and basically they told me, well, you know, that's kind of a rite of passage with these systems. At some point in time, it seems like almost everybody will inevitably plug in a card wrong and these diodes will be destroyed in the process so um, it's it was no big surprise to anybody uh, that I ran into this it was also suggested that maybe I put in some um, resettable fuses in line with these and um, as I'll talk about later that probably would have been a really smart idea um, a smart idea that I didn't follow through with so um, this is not the last time we're going to probably be seeing um, a diode repair here. I did, for fun, take a few minutes and take the two intact diodes that came off the board and uh, tested them. And uh, surprisingly, they look just fine, but um, I did replace all four diodes um, with matching diodes. Um, once that was all taken care of, I felt um, safe plugging the unit in. I do have um, a Variac that I was able to bring up the voltage very slowly on the system and I did this over several hours in hopes that I would uh, go easy on uh, the components of the power supply. Um, the next thing was basically to check my work. So once the system was fully powered up I was able to check the voltage rails and found um, that I had the correct voltages. I had uh, needed to have between 17 and uh, 24 volts on one and between 9 and 12 on the other and as you can see the measurements there were um, right mid-range for both of those so we were in pretty good shape 
Now looking a little more closely at the front panel board, I could see that a lot of the pins on the ICs were very black. So at first I wondered, you know, are these corroded? Is that going to be a problem? So I did pull out one of the chips just to take a closer inspection of what the uh, IC pins looked like. Uh, they were definitely black and I dipped a fiberglass pan in just a little bit of deoxit and then kind of just lightly wiped each of the pins and uh, did get them nice and silvery again. But ultimately I decided that this is not something um, that I would probably do um, straight away to all of the different ICs. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is uh, just simply using deoxit in some of the sockets I think would accomplish just as much. And in doing some reading um, I read that a lot of these particular chips um, had a silver plating on the pins and so actually what we're seeing with that black is we're seeing uh, silver tarnish. And in reading about tarnish um, it actually is highly conductive. So this is not something that was likely to cause a problem anyway. So um, I'm not going to do that to all the chips, but just kind of did that with one as an experiment. The process I decided to do in reassembling the system was to follow the steps in the Heathkit uh, assembly manual. So I'm going through those original steps of doing the checks that they suggest in the manual and then installing the cards one at a time. And then there's instructions in, for each card as it's installed on doing kind of a power-up test. So in this case I'm going to install the front panel. Um, once I get that re-secured we'll go ahead and power it up and basically all the manual really says to watch for is for the bottom power LED on the board to light up. So that'll be our first check. Alright with the unit uh, plugged in and then fully powered up the good news is the power light comes on as expected. So that pretty much is the only real um, check that's suggested in the manual. And as you can see, the bottom LED on the left is our power indicator. And if that lights up, they're saying things are good and we're ready to continue. So the next thing we'll have to do is to mount up the CPU board. And in similar fashion, we'll go ahead and uh, power up once that's installed and do another light check. Well it's at this point that the train kind of went off the rails. I installed the CPU card and uh, turned on the power button and heard a loud snap and the lights went out. So it was time to take a look at what went wrong. And what the problem was was that I lost a tantalum capacitor on the CPU board and you can see here one of the tantalum capacitors is actually yellow instead of green. That's where I replaced the original 25 volt tantalum cap with a uh, 35 volt of the same measure I think was 2.2 microfarads. And because the tantalum cap shorted I had to again replace the diodes in the power section. Those uh, rectifier diodes I'd already replaced once. Unfortunately I'm missing a bit of video here. I didn't realize that my memory card had filled up so um, what I don't have footage of is I did put the CPU card in and uh, started the system with that in and this time no puff of smoke and no crack. I got a, a second red light um, so I had both the uh, run light and the power light on the front panel. Um, after installing the memory card in the system again I did try to boot it and nothing happened. Just the uh, power light uh, the run light and uh, no other light on the front panel so I knew I had another problem to chase down. So the approach I decided to take from here was to remove all the cards again and to check each individual chip using a T48 chip tester. With the exception of the microprocessor, the CPU clock, and the RAM chips I was able to check all of the integrated circuits on all of the boards and found that I had one bad 74240 chip on the CPU card and one bad 74135 chip on the front panel. Amazingly, all of the non-RAM chips on the memory board were good. After replacing the bad chips and reinstalling the cards, again, the system didn't boot. So I had to look a little deeper and I decided just to take a wild shot and see if I had another 8080 CPU 
And as it turns out, um, when I went through my junk drawer, I did. And uh, I decided to go ahead and install it in the system and to see what would happen from there. And much to my pleasant surprise, the system then did come to life. And I was able to see um, something other than just those two lights on the front panel. Now I actually had a readout. And I was able to finally put in the sample program from the H8 operation guide and was greeted with the Your H8 is up and running. I did notice though that the other two lights on the front panel, the, the monitor light and the interrupt light, uh, didn't light up and that's something I'm gonna have to look into. I did go ahead and uh, create a label to go ahead and finish the badging on the, the front of the unit and with a little bit of uh, Windex the front panel cleaned up beautifully. You notice all the kind of little chips and marks are now gone. So uh, I would say at this point I do have a functioning Heathkit H8 computer. There are still some things though that I need to address. Um, two of the things are of course the the two lights that are missing um, but I have some missing segments in some of the LEDs on the front panel so I did find some replacements for those uh, on eBay and I went ahead and ordered four even though I only have two bad ones just so I have some spares and here you'll also see that it did uh, run through uh, a memory check routine at least on the first 8k of RAM that were on that RAM board and I'll need to do some maybe bank swapping around see if I can get all the memory checked. I did also go ahead and fix those two LEDs and you'll notice that uh, they now work. One's a little brighter because it's a newer LED um, and it turned out that actually the monitor LED was installed backwards in the original assembly so I was able to correct that. You might also notice that I've installed the um, H8-5 card for uh, cassette interface and for um, Surreal I.O. So that's what's coming up uh, next time is I'm going to see if I can get this set up so that I can read and write from cassette so I don't have to keep typing in all of my little programs here. So hey thanks for watching and that's a quick update on where the H8 project is at. More to come.